We were told the game was over before we'd even started. We were told our bodies weren't made for it. It wasn't our time to play. We played anyway. And together we played like there was no tomorrow. And they told us that was fine. You can play. You're good enough. And thought that was good enough for us. It wasn't. We are relentless. The game isn't over until we say it's over. Until we get everything we've given everything for. Until we level the playing field. Lidl, proud supporters of ladies Gaelic football. Lidl, proud supporters of ladies Gaelic football. You still haven't gone full Lidl. Go on, make big savings like this lot. Pea nuggets. Excuse me? Look like them, pea nuggets. Once again? Pea nuggets, they're vegan. Pea nuggets? Yeah. I like, I like prawns, but I heard you cook them. Oh, there's loads of ways. Can we crave them? No. Join in and go full Lidl this year. Did you get milk? Shop without compromise and pay less. We were told the game was over before we'd even started. We were told our bodies weren't made for it. It wasn't our time to play. We played anyway. And together we played like there was no tomorrow. And they told us that was fine. You can play. You're good enough. And thought that was good enough for us. It wasn't. We are relentless. The game isn't over until we say it's over. Until we get everything we've given everything for. Until we level the playing field. Lidl, proud supporters of ladies Gaelic football. You still haven't gone full Lidl. Go on, make big savings like this lot. Pea nuggets. Excuse me? Look like them, pea nuggets. Once again? Pea nuggets. They're vegan. Yeah. You're very welcome along to Parnell Park for the Little Ladies National Football League Division 1 Round 7 encounter of the final round of series of games. Dublin taking on Waterford. Both teams out of contention of making a league final, but still preparation for the championship coming up in five weeks' time for both of these sides is the aim for the managements in this final round of games. Dublin lining out as selected with a team that was listed on Friday. Waterford making two changes from their side. Hannah Power being replaced and also Clara McCarth McCarthy at wing half forward also being replaced in there. But we'll run through the two teams shortly. But joining me on commentary will be Kira Trant, who was part of the Dublin team up until last year. So Kira will be on code commentary. We'll get a word with Kira in a moment on how Dublin's league campaign has been so far and how Mick Bohan will have looked back on it ahead of the championship, as I said, as they aim to retain the Leinster title. And that will begin 
on the 30th of April against the reigning All-Ireland champions Meath an away fixture for them a round robin series of course they will have a home game against Leash in that Leinster Championship but it's about the league this afternoon although both teams have nothing to play for just pride I suppose and finishing on a high before that championship but they will line out Dublin the home side with Abby Shields between the posts the full back line of Neve Crowley Lee, Leah Caffrey at full back and Jessica Tobin the half back line of Lauren McGee Martha Bourne and Eva Kane. midfield pairing then is Jennifer Dunn and Ailish O'Dowd half forward line of Kiva O'Connor Orla Nolan and Ellen Gribben the full forward line Kate Sullivan Neve Hetherton and Jodie Egan Waterford who have been probably the surprise packets of the year many predicted them to be down at the foot of the table fighting for relegation but they're safe and they've been very impressive so far in the championship and last weekend they beat the reigning all-ireland champions of course Meave by the narrowest of margins and their star forward Lauren McGregor who has scored six goals and five points in the championship so far so she has been in flying form and they will line out with Evelyn O'Brien in between the posts Cora Murray, Megan Dunford and Eva Murray making up the half back line Eve Power, Emma Murray and replacing Hannah Power at number 7 is number 19 coming in there Kate McGrath the midfield pairing then is Kellyanne Hogan and Eva Waring the full half forward line Anya O'Neill, Anya Annie Fitzgerald and replacing Cara McCarthy is number 17 Catherine Hines and the full forward line Karen McGrath the team captain Breach McMaugh and the sharpshooter Lauren McGregor and Dublin's top scorer Hannah Turrell giving a rest this afternoon she isn't listed in the substitutes not sure if she has picked up an injury but maybe Kira will be fit to tell me that one but she has scored two goals and 22 points so far in the league Kira nothing to play for I suppose but it's preparation for the championship for both sides yeah, huge preparation for the championship. Both teams will be working on their game plan, trying to focus on the basics. Um, that will be the aim. I think Waterford will come in with a bit of a skip in their step, having gotten over the line with me. They, they close out the game really well and were really in control of the game the last five minutes, which they weren't against Kerry and Cork. Um, they kind of threw away the game in both situations. So they're coming in here with confidence. They're looking for another scalp. Um, they'll, you know, they'll, be, they'll back themselves to beat this Dublin team as well. Dublin will be looking to tidy up the simple things today um, and seal out the league and carry a bit of momentum into the five weeks before a championship. When Mick Bowen looks back on the league, I know it's a very new look Dublin side. It's, it's a rebuilding Dublin team. It's new look and as I say, it's trying to blend players in, preparing for the championship. Will he be happy with how the league has gone so far? Maybe you know him, you've played under him. He's probably not happy to have lost a couple of the games. Uh, Mick's never happy, <laughs> win or lose. No, it, it is lucky you have, you have kind of a, a new look, lots of new players that are being um, bred in the league, which, which is always nice to see. You need that every year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on the flip side of things, you have girls that you'd consider, or I would have considered the younger girls. They're, they're the older core of the team now. So, you know, they've been, they've been the leaders of the team. They've been carrying team, the spine of the team. Um, so they've been had to step up in, in a new kind of role within the group this year. So it's nice to see um, a lot of lessons to be learned. Some hard lessons in the league as well, and um, this campaign, um, but plenty of positives to take as well. And you know, if they leave here today with positives, it's it's looking good for for the Leinster Championship. And it would if they do win today. That would be three wins in, in a row for them. So that would be perfect mm-hmm. going into a championship. Although we did talk off air, the championship is still five weeks away. Yeah, but it, it's a quick turnaround. Like you, you'd have your your kind of your deload week after the league and then it's it's trying to kind of time it that you're not peaking for the first round you know but you're still able to to grind out a good performance get a bit of momentum for the rest of the league and you know and then you're trying to you know hopefully end the the Leinster championship with a bit of silverware and then you're you're looking to peak in towards your your quarterfinal semi-finals of the All-Ireland final so it's still it's still a, a distance out from from where you want to be at your best but also you don't want to be chasing performances and, and chasing um you know game plans and chasing your tail sort of thing you need to you need to start off on the front foot for for the championship so today's a very important important match for for both teams in yeah. that sense yeah, because Waterford there, of course, the Munster Championship, they'll be in along with Kerry, Cork and Tipperary. They're playing a round-robin series as well, but Waterford, they have been the surprise packets because at the start of the year, people were tipping them to be down at the foot of the division fighting because last year they beat Westmeath in a, a relegation playoff to stay in Division 1. So they have been the surprise packets, but as you touched on it, their performances have been excellent. 
yeah, look, they. I think Cork got won the game in the 66th minute. Kerry won the game in the 67th minute. You're a Waterford player. You're you're distraught coming off the pitch. You know, being in charge of the game uh, and throwing it away. So the win against Mead was very important for them. Yeah. We we'll just pause for our on the veil. The formalities all but over. Our referee for this afternoon from County Down, Gavin Finnegan, has made the way up the M1 for this, the final round of the Little Ladies National Football League. Waterford playing in their white jerseys. Look like they will be defending the dressing room end of Parnell Park. And a little bit of a breeze looking down on the flags. It's difficult to see. It's more kind of cross field. It's not really favouring anyone, Kira. So you've played on this pitch many a time. So you'd know what way the wind will blow. Will it favour anybody? Yeah, it kind of swirls and dips at different, at different stages of the game um, or different parts of the pitch. Um, so you can't really you know, prepare for it in that sense. You just have to take it play by play. Um, the one thing about Parnell Park is it, does, it is kind of lopsided. So you know, it generally the play kind of favours coming, coming the golf, golf course end yeah. or, dressing room, or dressing room side of the pitch. So... Um, just with the natural fall of the ground, so that will that will favour the right-footed players um, attacking the at Waterford in the first half. Um, but you know, in fairness, if the rain stays away, it'll be great conditions for a game, really. What Dublin players have caught your eye this year so far? Um, very impressed with Ailish O'Dowd in midfield coming in. I think, think you know Jennifer Dunn's a big leader, and to play alongside her, it's probably helped her develop and progress. You know, she's a good link, link player, does a lot of hard work off the ball. So uh, very impressed with her. Delighted to see Jody Egan getting a lot of game time again this year. Kate Sullivan, Quivo O'Connor linking up for goals uh, has been very Im impressive, and I think Leah Caffrey has been absolutely outstanding. I think possibly the best player in the country in the league so far and probably not getting the credit she deserves. She's been phenomenal. Dublin have shipped a lot of goals this year. I suppose something of a surprise. Nine goals have shipped this year. They've scored ten, of course, at the other end. Kate Sullivan, you mentioned there, has scored three of those. And I suppose their top scorer this afternoon isn't available to them. Her, Hannah Tyrrell with 2.22. So with Hannah missing, where's the scores? Oh, anywhere, yeah. anywhere. You've Orla Nolan there playing centre forward. She kicking, kicking them from distance against Donegal was great to see. Ellen Gribman as well. If she gets that ball on the left foot, um, she can stroke it over the ball nicely. Like every single Dublin forward is a threat. But then coming forwards, if Eva Kane gets gets the chance to to pull the trigger, she will. Jen Dunn as well. Um, goals or points can come from her. So. You know, anyone in the Dublin team really is a threat. Um, losing Hannah, it's obviously huge to any team not having mm -hmm. her talking out today, but uh, it's it's not something that'll be a massive a massive worry. Yeah, and sometimes when your top scorer is missing, the other players stand up to the task and deliver. So Gavin Finnegan getting ready to get this Little Ladies National Football League encounter underway. As I said, Waterford playing from left to right as we look out here. They have changed. Karen McGrath, the team captain, has gone to the centre of the field along with Emma Murray who has really been superb this year as well. And the Waterford colours and we're underway here. And this knockdown in Dublin, first into possession. Jennifer Dunn heading of course down under later in the year to Lauren McGee who was down under. So she might have been giving her a few tips ahead of that trip. So Waterford in defensive mode at the moment. There's a good block down over on the far side but Dublin hold possession and they try to work their way in but the referee blows for over carrying. I thought her arm must have been pulled a little bit there Kira. Um Yeah just, just a, a soft kind of foul um, definitely a free um, but that's good for, for Waterford not to allow the first attack for a score so they'll be happy to settle into the game now. Dublin putting the pressure on not letting Waterford work their way out. But 
Something Warner would like to do, working it from the back, and we'll see Emma Murray making many a dart up the field. Although she did start in the middle of the park, but I think she could well have dropped in again now to centre half back again. But Waterford in possession at the moment, just been put under pressure by Dublin. The press put on as they try to turn it over, and they've done exactly that. And in there for it is Ellen Gribben, just broken down, picked up by Eilish O'Dowd. And Dublin coming forward now. An opportunity here for Neve Hetterton, but is blocked down, and the referee has given a free out to Waterford. And there's something we have seen throughout the league, Kira. Players running into each other and it seems to go the way of the player that's standing their ground. Yeah, I think I think Neve Hederson just lost control of the ball and the bounce there and, and just put a boot through it and caught the player in the in the face but um kind of innocuous uh foul in fairness. Dublin are coming forward again, Jennifer Dunn not gives it off, but it's just Dropped out of the hands there of Jody Egan, but she had time to pick it up again. Now over on the far side, Kiva O'Connor. Low delivery inside, and it's a good ball inside, and it breaks back out here to Kiva again. But Waterford getting the hand in to disrupt that one, but it's back out here now. A chance for Neve, but Neve's effort is half blocked down, and Waterford turned that one over again as they work their way out. And Waterford will be happy with the first couple of attacks from Dublin. They've turned them over. Yeah, two, two blocks straight away. They're they're forcing Dublin to, to make silly mistakes um, and hand passes and stuff like that. So um, no clear cut chance there so far and, and Dublin in control of the game. Long delivery from Kellyanne Hogan into the full forward breach. McMaw. McMaw taking on the Dublin defence and lays it off there. An opportunity here for Lauren McGregor. McGregor coming through. She knows where the goal is, but this time it's blocked down. It's out for a 45. Six goals to her name already, and she fancied a number seven there. But good defensive play by Dublin, and she will take watching Lauren McGregor because she's been in outstanding form in the league so far, Kira. Yeah, she has. L Lauren's the kind of player that you just can't switch off. Um, you know, a ball off the post, anything dropping short, she's always at the end of it. Um, so a massive job for Jessica Tobin today, um, man marking her. Here comes Emma Murray driving forward for Waterford, but that's good defensive play from Dublin, but Waterford win it back again, and that's good play, but it's blocked down again, but it's broken kindly back to the Waterford girl who turned one way and then the other, but give it back out, and Waterford trying to recycle it again, trying to... Again, a little bit of ground, but they've been pushed back out by the Dublin defence. But now the long delivery inside, and it's a good one into the towards the corner, and it's picked up by the Waterford player in there, where number 17, which is Catherine Hines. But Hines wins it back at the second attempt, lays it off to McMaw. McMaw coming forward here, sidesteps the challenge there. That will come in from the Dublin cornerback, which was Cora Murray. Back out now to Emma Murray, and Murray's effort just tails out to the wrong side, and we have the first wide of the game going to Waterford but both sides just taking a little bit of time to settle in a couple of handling errors from both of them but a chance for Abby Shields for the kick out and she goes down the centre and is gathered there by Eve or for but Lauren or not Lauren McGee apologies Eve again and Dublin coming forward again and there's a good long delivery in Orla Nolan goes long again but the bounce as well red by Neve Hetherton, Hetherton inside, and a quick return back out to her again. This is quick hands here from Dublin, but again the Waterford players get around them. Maybe the wrong option to try the shot there because there was three Dublin players around Akira, and it was very quickly closed off. Yeah, Waterford players were, were quick to, to close down the space. That's their third block um, in the last Dublin's last three attacks, so they'll be happy with that. But but Dublin need to to choose their shots a little bit better. So five minutes gone, we're still awaiting the first score. Maybe Waterford can deliver it with this attack, but they've been pushed away over to the far side. And it's gathered over there by Anya O'Neill. O'Neill, though, was blocked off by Lauren McGee. And they have to come again back out into the centre half forward. Annie Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald trying to go past the challenge, but Fitzgerald is half blocked down. Back to McNaugh. McMaw. McMaw goes past Jennifer Dunn inside. Now Waterford might have the opportunity, but. Dublin getting the bodies around, making them work hard, and the back out again to Emma Murray. Emma Murray finds a little bit of space, but she runs into the challenge, and Dublin 
Stopper, but Murray gets away from it again, trying to take on another challenge. Side steps one challenge, side steps the other, but again, this time it's to the other side of the post with the left foot, and it's a second wide for Emma Murray, but she's very comfortable in possession. Yeah, she is. She's very hard to stop, Emma, in fairness to her, a very strong player. Um, I was quite impressed with Dublin's defending there. They keep the hands out wide, um, not giving away um, easy frees, like the referee couldn't do anything there. Um, in terms of awarding and Waterford player free. So excellent defending um, by, by the Dubs. They've clearly been working on that. So the push in the back, referee says to play on because Dublin have possession over there. And it's Orla Nolan inside. And again, the pass goes astray from Dublin. And Waterford turn it over yet again. And here they come. And Dublin will be disappointed with some of their hand passing in the early stages of this one as that one skips away from McGregor picked up there by Jessica Tobin back to the goalkeeper Shields Shields good delivery out here now to Aoife Cain for the run up now to McGee McGee goes longer to Gribben Ellen Gribben right into the corner looking for the run there of Jody Egan Egan holds off the challenge of Cora Murray Egan inside and an opportunity now for Gribben Gribben with the effort and Gribben with the first score of the game that's a good move from Dublin and it's finished by Emma Ellen Gribben good score yeah fantastic score Dublin Dublin really need to keep kicking the ball in getting the ball in really quick to, to bypass that Waterford retreat um, and you have good ball winners in there in terms of, um, of Jody Egan and Eve Hederton so getting them just to secure possession and get the runners like Ellen off the shoulder uh, and that's you know a kick on our favourite side it was a lovely strike Evelyn O'Brien goes down the centre and the breaking ball is picked up by Waterford and it was the corner back there Eva Murray lays it back to Eve Power and now they're going across to the stand side, long fist over but again the pressure being put on there by Dublin, Kiva O'Connor trying to turn it over but Waterford hold possession as they step outside the 65 metre line and spread it over here towards the sideline but it's too much on that one and it's going to be a sideline ball to Dublin which is going to be taken by Lauren McGee who's taken quickly because she found the run there of Orla Nolan. Nolan inside the 45 metre line with the outside of the boot and it's a good one for Egan to run after but the goalkeeper is quickly off her line O'Brien to gather possession lays it off now to Cora Murray Murray coming solo on out as Waterford look to back up their victory the last day against Meave but again possession given away cheaply but a good challenge coming in from McGee Lays it to Jennifer Dunn, plays the 1-2, back to Lauren again. Lauren looks for support and coming in from the far wing. It's the wing half forward there, Kiva O'Connor. O'Connor going through the centre, might fancy a goal here. She's hauled down and the referee signals that this will be a penalty, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he's just taking his time, but it was. A penalty to Dublin. Good, strong run from Kiva. Fantastic run from from Kiva O'Connor. Um, she really, really skillful. Skillful. Changed direction really, really uh, quickly. Um, so you know, with carrying pace like that, it's really easy to give away a free. But that came from Eve Power carrying the ball into the tackle against Lara McGee, and that's the last person you want to to end up in a tackle with. So Orla Nolan, with the opportunity from the penalty spot, as cool as you like, side foots it into the back of the net for the opening goal of the game from the penalty spot that's as cool as you like yeah Orla Nolan uh, extremely cool um, and a fantastic finish just had to put it either, either side of the goalkeeper and it was a goal so Dublin off to the better start 10 minutes coming up on the clock the lead by 1-1 to no score and they're coming forward yet again as Hetterton comes away out deep to gather possession plays the 1-2 coming then through the centre is Eilish O'Dowd back out here it was a ballooned up into the air though but Jody Egan just dropping on the 21 and it's a loud bounce and the midfielder is in there and she may win possession she does gets it back out to Kiva again back further out to Egan Egan waits for the run rod of Mickey and this is a good move again from Dublin can they get the finish they can as it got the helping hand of the goalkeeper but it's flicked into the back of the net but the referee is going to have a ward here with the umpires He's unsure if she was in the square or not. As the goalkeeper palmed that one down. And was it punished by Nolan for the goal? The referee having a little word with his umpires before making the decision. If it is going to be a second goal for Dublin or not. Yep. The green flag is going. And it is a second goal for Orla Nolan. Quick reaction from Nolan. 
excellent play by Dublin there. You know, Quivo O'Connor didn't force the force the shot. She knew the angle was closed down. Dublin recycled, switched the play. Even Nolan timing her run off the shoulder. Would have been disappointed didn't go over the bar, but someone like Orla and Nolan can read the play really well and, and just was alive to pop it into the net. And here comes Dublin yet again with Egan, and this one's a dangerous one across the front of the goals, but it's out for a wide, but Dublin, two goals and a point to no score. It was a slow starter, but they're making it count now, Kira. Yeah, Waterford are under massive pressure on their kickouts, and like, like against me, they're trying to just overload one side of the pitch, get numbers around the ball, um, kick it long and hope to pick up something off the end of it, and in ladies football, not many balls are won clean, so you know if Dublin can just swarm the kickouts, they'll get joy. And they've got a hand to that one as well, but Waterford are quickest to react to the loose ball, so they have possession, but Dublin putting the pressure on, and they've turned it over again, and the referee says illegally so. So Waterford have got a free as they look to get their name on the score sheet before the game slips further away from them. But we've seen last week where Waterford can come back at you, they never lie down and they'll keep coming and this girl here will keep driving forward in Emma Murray as she comes forward but she's put under pressure there but she manages to hold it off, waits for the midfielder to come in support, gives it back to Murray again, Murray finds a little bit of space she's had two wides already but this time she's made it third time lucky and Emma Murray with the opening score and I'm sure it'll not be the last time we'll be mentioning her driving forward Now Dublin would have identified her as a threat before the game and for her to have three shots already be the only Watford player to, to have had three goes on uh, on goal so far um, is a bit worrying. Dublin need to, to get a bit tighter on her now. Dublin moving it through the hands here and then they go long. And this one is coming in and it's well gathered there by Neve Hedrington against the full back and Neve holds possession, waits for the run now of Jennifer Dunn coming through the centre and Dunn just flicks it out and it might be another goal but the referee says that it's over carrying from Jennifer Dunn. She just lost control, but she was quick to react to flick it out. But the referee's whistle had already sounded, and it's a free out. But Dublin, they're coming through the centre, and they've got the players coming in support. So it's been a lot of positive so far for Mick Bohan's side. Yeah, their 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 handling wasn't great in the first five minutes of the game, but they they've started to settle into it a little bit better now. They've kind of adjusted to Waterford and how they're playing and that, that long ball into Neve Hedderton is, is working really well. Megan Dunford, Dunford is all over her but she's still winning that kind of physical battle um, so Dublin just need to keep doing more of that and get the likes of Jen Dunn, uh, Orla Nolan, El Ellen Grimm and Quivo O'Connor off the shoulder. They can mix their game they can go long and they can play the running mm -hmm. game they've been impressive so far Waterford put under pressure here and she's out over the sideline yeah, the referee, or the linesman's flag goes, but the referee playing the advantage, but the, the ball was well over the line, so I don't know what, he's playing the advantage, because he would have to go back for the free, because she ran out over the sideline, now the referee's going back for the sideline ball, so I wasn't sure what he was playing advantage for, Kira, because she was way out over the sideline. Yeah, I think somebody might have had a word in his ear there. So it is a sideline ball to Dublin and they're going long again looking for Neve. got a little nudge in the back but she still held possession there ahead of Megan Dunford and Neve taking her on here and must pull back and wins a free in and she really is a handful in there and she's got the winning of that battle so far I think Megan Dunford's making a the point there to the referee that yeah the ball went over the sideline possibly she was pushed over the sideline but if he's playing advantage beforehand it should have been brought back for the yeah. Waterford free rather than a Dublin sideline ball so a chance here for Kate Sullivan from the St. Sylvester's Club to pop over her first score of the afternoon and extend the Dublin lead back out to seven points. And Kate just inside the near post and makes no mistake with the freight to open her account and extend the lead out now to 2-2 two -two to one point. And a quick look at the watch tells me we're coming up on 15 minutes gone, so midway through the opening half and Waterford Dublin have cut out any short kick out so she has to go long again and so far Dublin have had the upper hand on that but that's a well worked one and it's caught there by Kellyanne Hogan and Hogan gives it into the centre but to her midfield partner which was Ava Waring but Waring turned into trouble but she managed to get support from Karen McGrath gives it back again to Emma Murray Murray spotted a little bit of movement out on the stand side and that movement come from Waring Waring 
flicks it on inside as Waterford try to get away through this Dublin defence and back to Waring again but she's turned away from the goals waits for support it comes from McMaw McMaw has got options outside her if she needs them and she uses one of those which is Eve Power Power into the centre to McMaw again McMaw turns away from the challenge was caught high there and the referee's whistle sounds so that's going to be a free in to Waterford and the referee just taking the note of the number there which was Martha Bourne I think this could be a yellow card it's looking like it's yeah an accidental in fairness um, it was high I think Martha does ag- acknowledge that um, Breed McMaw is very quick on her feet there she turns and uh, that's probably what caught Martha um, by surprise but yeah 10 minutes um, Martha was away before the card ever come yeah she knew what was coming so Dublin will have to adjust to this but you know I imagine unless Waterford change their tactics they won't have much to do because Water, Waterford are dropping players back so it'll just be a situation where they go man on man um, so it's a lovely score there by Kellyanne Hogan she's been very solid on a freeze um, throughout the year yeah she's 25 points to her name in the, in the league so far so that's number 26 for her and you do really need a, a reliable free taker now yeah, a lot of teams play very, very defensive nowadays. So, you know, scoring opportunities are few and far between. When you get a free, you really do have to make sure it goes over the bar. So Waterford will be trying to take advantage now of Dublin down to 14 players. And the trail by those two goals from Orla Nolan. One from the penalty spot and then quickly after it, she palmed the ball into the back of the net after the Waterford goalkeeper had managed to just knock one down. So a chance here for Hogan again for two points in a row for her and for Waterford as they try to make inroads into this Dublin advantage with six almost just over 17 minutes gone in this opening half of the Little Ladies National Football League Division 1 encounter live from Parnell Park as Hogan comes forward again and makes no mistake for her second point of the day and it just reduces the deficit ever so slightly and they will be looking to chip into it when with Martha Bourne in the sin bin. Yeah you have to take these opportunities um, I find sometimes when a team go down to 14 players they actually start to work harder and grind out a better performance than when they have 15 players but by the looks of things Waterford have gotten a bit of a boost off that and they're on their second attack in a row and they're coming as I say forward yet again and they'll try to work their way in here McGregor has turned too many times and taken too many steps. She's going on her mind every time she gets the hands on the ball. Yeah, I think she was a bit unfortunate there in fairness. I thought she did very well to, to keep possession of the ball and weave in and out. Um, especially, you know, she went down to ground as well and got up fairly quickly. Um, but this will give Dublin a chance just to settle a little bit more. The Dublin player just down, tying her lace, but the referee says to get on with it. And the free is taken out towards Jennifer Dunn. Dunn trying to hold off the challenge there and she does so. Play the ball forward. Dublin holding possession but they're put under pressure as Waterford try to turn it over but Dublin have found a little bit of space. They're going long but it's straight down the throat of the Waterford gear and it's in here now to McGrath. McGrath quick offload and Waterford coming forward looking ahead of herself looking for the long ball in but that's going to be a wasted possession and that's going to trickle out and go down as a wide for Waterford. And in possession, the Mortifer management will be very disappointed to give it away so cheaply again. As Dublin take the short kick out and take the goalkeeper, Shields takes the return again. It's into the centre now for Leah Caffrey. Caffrey caught in possession there. The referee says that her arm was pulled. A let off. Yeah, a bit of a let off there. Dublin, Dublin will be very disappointed with themselves, allowing... Uh, players to get isolated in the last two or three transitions out of defence. Um, Waterford are just pressing up. They're they're trying to turn over the ball in the opposition's half, which they weren't doing for the first 15, 20 minutes of the game. Um, so, you know, Waterford obviously just need to keep what they're doing what they're doing now and put pressure on the Dublin defence. Shields goes to the far side. And Dublin hold possession again. Kate Sullivan come for the, the kick out there. Back to Sullivan again, very close to the far sideline though, but Leah Caffrey's there to help her out and she flicks it forward. Now Dublin have got a little bit of space to move into and Neve Hatter makes that run again and it's played in towards her but maybe it should have been played a few minutes earlier but it has worked out. Jennifer Dunn quick offload now to O'Dowd out with a chance but it's straight at the goalkeeper but the opportunity's still there and it's a third goal for Dublin and it's the number 12 Ellen Gribbon that is there and it was quick hands again from Dublin 
They might have got been disappointed not to have taken the first opportunity with O'Dowd, but it broke to Gribbon, and she made no mistake. Again, quick hands from Dublin, and moving at a pace, Kira opened up the Waterford defence. Yeah, fantastic attack by Dublin there. Um, did get closed in on the sideline, but, but did much better than pr- the previous play. Kate Sullivan has been a great outlet for the Dublin backs coming out of defence, and Dublin just got a wave, a blue wave, uh, following the ball off the shoulder. Um, Ailish O'Dowd would be disappointed. She's uh, she had an, an opportunity like that earlier in the league and didn't score again so obviously an area of her game she has to work on but the positive is she's, she's getting in those possessions and you know Ellen Gribben followed the play and, and got on the end of it and there's no stopping her shot when she puts the boot behind it No, right in the roof of the net and Neve Hetterton again involved there come away out towards the 45 to win possession and Waterford are really struggling to keep control of Neve. at the moment she's been involved in a lot of what Dublin have done well and they've won themselves a free in here, and McBowen will be delighted because Martha Bourne in the sin bin. They've hit a third goal and taken control of this game very much back after Waterford had hit two points and given themselves a little bit of hope. But it's a chance now to extend the lead out further with Kate Sullivan, who has hit a free already from the other side, but this one not as much suitable for the right foot of. Sullivan and she hits this one in and hits it between the posts and over it doesn't matter where if it's from the left or from the right she can still manage to split the post and Kate Sullivan my horse second and it's a good response from Dublin after the two in a row from Waterford and of course the sin bit and Waterford kick out again under pressure Dublin pushing up on it and they're getting a lot of reward from it, Kira. Yeah, Evelyn, Evelyn O'Brien um, was unlucky there in terms of, okay, she didn't strike the ball like she wanted to, but there was lots of space for Watford players to, to make options for her, and, and they didn't. So she needs to dem- demand more off her players in terms of, of giving her options for those kickouts because the space is there. Um, they are creating it. Dublin are going man to man. So Watford just needs to do, do a little bit better. So the three goals, two from. Orla Nolan, one from Ella Gribben, separates the sides at the moment with just about seven minutes of normal time remaining in this opening half. So Dublin very much in control, but Waterford, we know, will never give up and they'll keep battling to the very end as they try to work their way forward. But I'm impressed by Dublin when they're not in possession, they're putting a lot of pressure on the Waterford players and they're making them work very, very hard to try and create anything. But they are trying to work their way forward here. That's the full back. There's a way up the field at the moment. Dunford. So Dunford is fouled just on the 45-metre line. So I'm just looking with Dunford up there. Is there have they replaced or changed on Hetherton? No, she's up moving her way towards her own 45 as well. So Lauren McGee turns that one over. Good defending from McGee. That's Dublin. Just turn it over again and now the running game from Dublin moving the ball through the hands very quickly and suddenly they're inside the Waterford half and they're coming forward and there's a nudge on the back there and the referee may have a little word here with the Waterford girl because it looked like it was a cynical foul. They knew they were in trouble as Dublin moved it very quickly but they're a dream to watch when Dublin's passing it through the hands quickly like that, Kira. Yeah, they, they run it really well. You have a lot of pace in the likes of Ellen Gribben, Quivo O'Connor, Kate Sullivan to, to transition really quickly uh, and that's the second time Quivo O'Connor has, has built up a bit of steam uh, a bit of pace in her run and, and their first one was a penalty and the second one ha- you have there um, a free probably a tactically a good free to give away um, but we need to get her uh, Dublin needs to get her running on the ball uh, a bit more mm-hmm. when she has opportunities to go she, she needs to go I'm just looking at Dunford she seems to have left her full back position at the moment so I think Waterford may have made a change there on Neve. Hetterton, they've dropped somebody else back there. I think it could well be Cora Murray. Oh no, it's the other corner back that's in there. Aoife Murray seems to be picking up Neve at the moment. Yeah, I think Waterford need a bit more leadership going forward around that middle third area. And, you know, if you're looking for a leader, one of the first people they'll look for um, is Megan Dunford. Um, I think she's a little bit frustrated in that full back position in terms of uh, the referee. She's She's been having conversations with him as well. So, you know, getting forward up the pitch um, is probably not a bad idea either for her if she she has a bit of uh, bit of frustration motivating her a little bit more. Jodie Egan 
with that free to extend the lead out for Dublin. Now they've hit 1-2 without reply. As half time approaches here. And Dub Waterford are really under pressure with the kick outs and that's gone astray. And Neve Hedrington picks it up again. I see Dunford back on her again, lays it off now to, jo to Jennifer Dunn. Dunn wasn't sure what to do with that one, lays it back out here to Egan and Egan splits the post. And really Waterford are under severe pressure with their kick out. Yeah, the goalkeeper is very conscious of keeping possession. Um, there I think she's trying to find a balance between going long and, and hitting the area where they've, they've numbers around the ball and going short and she just got caught between two mines uh, and it's easy to make a mistake when that happens She goes long on this occasion but again it's Dublin that win the breaking ball with Aoife Kane lays it off now to Kiva O'Connor O'Connor lays it quickly and there seems to be a lot of steps there and the referee says yes she tried to break away from the challenge but Kate Sullivan Blue for over carrying and Dublin in control 3 5 to 3 points here in Parnell Park. And the Waterford really under severe pressure at the moment. Eva Murray picks that one up, lays it off now to Emma. And quick offload to Kelly Ann back again. And Waterford moving it here, but lost her foot in the Waterford gear. But it broke out to Hogan again. Hogan fists it over to the far side to McMaw. McMaw tries to sidestep one challenge, then the other, and managed to do so. Lays it back out, but Waterford don't have those runners that Dublin have coming through. And Waterford have made, made working hard. Dublin putting them under a lot of pressure as they get the bodies back. McMaw back out again. And this time it's the midfielder wearing, wearing under pressure though. And Dublin forcing the mistakes from Waterford and Waterford really struggling to get any opportunities and then it was a snapshot from Kellyanne Hogan but that's great defensive play from Dublin they're forcing Waterford into mistakes and they forced a, a really snapshot from Kellyanne Hogan there Yeah the way Waterford had set up they, they, they've they left Dublin with an extra defender and at the moment Dublin are using Leah Caffrey to be that defender um, so Waterford, she, like she's sitting um, in the full back position or halfway between full back and, and centre back, and Waterford's full forwards don't seem to be able to find space to run into. Therefore, they're, they're having to carry the ball and they're going quite central um, and, and clogging it up a little bit more. So Waterford need to, to review that at half time and kind of approach their attack a little bit differently um, for the second half. Here comes Hogan for Waterford, but again, Dublin getting the bodies around and getting the hand in there. And the referee says illegally so, but it looked like it was a very good challenge from Ella Gribben to turn that one over. But the referee saying that the Waterford girl had been fouled. Maybe it was something earlier. Maybe there was a little pull back on her beforehand before Gribben got the hand in. So it's a chance here for Kellyanne. As I say that, she plays it right back. Out here now to Eve Power. Power plays it in now to Kellyanne again, flicks it out here. And there's an opportunity now for Anya O'Neill, but O'Neill's effort goes to the wrong side of the post. And White just rushed it a little bit, O'Neill. I think she had more time than she realised to hit that one in. But Waterford, just feel that Waterford need to move the ball a little bit quicker, Kira. Yeah, yeah, they do. They need to. They need to go in in threes and fours rather than in ones and twos, and they have to try offload the ball before the tackle um, and that's that's easy to do when you have support runners um, but maybe they're just you know hoping for half time now um, but you never know one attack a goal that can that can flip the game as well so Dublin have to have to stay alert defensively they will especially with Lauren McGregor in there because half a chance she knows where the goal is as two Waterford girls collide and this gives the opportunity here for Orla Nolan to come forward she gets the effort away as she was caught as she got that one away but the referee says it was fair enough and it goes down as a wide for Dublin with about 30 seconds of normal time remaining in this opening half. Dublin with three goals, one from the penalty spot for Orla Nolan, then she panned one into the net for her second before Ella Gr Ellen Gribben notched the third to have them in control here in Parnell Park and Waterford struggling to find the answers at the moment. But here comes McMaw, who goes to ground under the challenge there of Neve Crowley. And it's going to be a free to Waterford. And I don't remember too many stoppages in the first half, so we shouldn't have too much injury time. Maybe there's still time for one last attack here for 
Waterford to come forward to try and create something here but again it's slow and it suits Dublin because they've got the bodies back there to cut that one out and the kind of players taking it in standing positions at the moment for Waterford there's nobody coming off the shoulder at pace to take the ball off the player and here's Emma Murray trying to inject a little bit of pace into the attack but again it's slowed down but there is an opportunity for Anya O'Neill now to McMaw a breach McMaw inside the challenge and the referee says no I thought he was going to blow he was looking at the watch there but he's giving the advantage here to Waterford because there was a little tug there so it's going to be a free in to Waterford and possibly the last action of the first half so Kellyanne Hogan who has two points from freeze may fancy her chances from here the referee may be just telling her that this could well be the last action of the opening half that has been enjoyed more by the home side, Dublin. And a chance here for Hogan to come forward. But again, it's to the near post and it's out for another wide. As Gavin Finnegan says, that is that for the opening half. So Dublin, Kira will be very, very happy. 3-5 three, to three points in front. Yeah, they, they won't be happy in terms of, of the start of the game. Um, but as the game progressed, you know, they're, they were, they're getting results from their attack. So Dublin just need to make sure that when they attack, the ball's going dead and they're increasing their success rate off the back of that. Defensively, their shape is quite good. But Waterford need to, to ask more questions of them. At the moment, you know, the only player that you can say that's really stepping up for them is, is Breed McMaw. She's been doing the work of, of six forwards uh, in there. Um, Lauren McGregor has been kept very quiet. So Waterford, the likes of Kellyanne Hogan and Ava Waring, they need to get forward more like they, they've been doing earlier in the season. They need to ask questions of, of the Dublin defence and supply the likes of Lauren McGregor and Breed McMaw with the ball closer to goal. At the moment, Breed's, Breed's on the ball around the 45 and that's not where you want your sharpshooter getting the ball. Um, so, you know, I think Dublin will be, will be happy enough with the scoreline and the goals um, Waterford have had a lot of wides as well so they'll be disappointed in, in terms of that you know has the amount of shots both teams taken been equal um, in that sense um, but yeah I'm expecting a, a different Waterford team to come out in the second half um, and, re and really test this Dublin side Waterford will be, will be quite disappointed and Dublin as well they'll be getting a lot of confidence um, from Evelyn O'Brien's kickouts, yeah. and that's an, that's an area that they, they, they need to chase um, and, I, and, and target a little bit more at the same time Waterford d did well there immediately after Martha Byrne got Simbins Waterford turned over two Dublin kickouts two Dublin transitions so Dublin won't be, be happy with that yes they responded responded well after that but that was a, a chance or two chances that Waterford kind of left behind them um, so it will be a, d a different second half Waterford will be playing with a lot more momentum but um, still it, you know like we said at the start of the game McBone and ever would be happy and there'll be girls there'll be girls on the bench looking t to come in and make a difference for Dublin as well um, in the last their last match before a championship um, so it'll be a big second half yeah, exactly as you said it's the last game before the championship so there is jerseys up for grabs in that big opener against Meath at the end of April more from Kira and myself in the second half live here from Parnell Park but half time in the Little Ladies National Football League it's Dublin 3-5 Waterford 3 points We were told the game was over before we'd even started we were told our bodies weren't made for it. It wasn't our time to play. We played anyway. And together we played like there was no tomorrow. And they told us that was fine. You can play. You're good enough. And thought that was good enough for us. It wasn't. We are relentless. The game isn't over until we say it's over. Until we get everything we've given everything for. Until we level the playing field. Lidl, proud supporters of ladies Gaelic football. How are you cooking? Oh, there's loads of ways. Can we wave them? No. Join in and go full Lidl this year. Did you get milk? Shop without compromise and pay less.
We were told the game was over before we'd even started. We were told our bodies weren't made for it. It wasn't our time to play. We played anyway. And together we played like there was no tomorrow. And they told us that was fine. You can play. You're good enough. And thought that was good enough for us. It wasn't. We are relentless. The game isn't over until we say it's over. Until we get everything we've given everything for. Until we level the playing field.
Welcome back to Parnell Park. As you can see, Dublin are back on the field and they've made a couple of changes. They've introduced Carla Rowe and Danielle Lawless into the fray. So, just to liven things up again for the Dubs who are in control. 3-5 three, to 3 points, as you will see on your scoreboard. So, it's all the questions that's been asked of Waterford in the second half. And Kira Trant alongside me. Kira, we're looking at a big improvement from Waterford. They're, really, they're going to have to move a lot quicker, move the ball a lot quicker and really take a leaf out of what we saw from, from Dublin and, and mix it a little bit because Dublin passing it through the hands were very quick but then they had that target inside of Neve Hetterton and they used her so well. Yeah, uh, D Dublin, in fairness, D Dublin forwards are working really, really hard around the midfield, that, that middle third of the pitch and Waterford are just getting slowed, uh, slowed down there. The pitch is... Like the play is getting very clogged up and that's what Dublin wants so Waterford need to react to that and bypass that middle third um, and then get runners after the ball like you said like Dublin are doing uh, get the ball in early uh, into the space into the danger danger women uh, and punish Dublin and that will cause Dublin to retreat probably a little bit more and Waterford might get further joy from it then um, but yeah it'll be an interesting second half two changes like you're coming out of the dressing room and you figure out you're marking Carla Rowe it's probably not the boost you need I think she's going to go in to midfield straight away so Carla just uh, you know bottomless pit of energy um, so um, there's a big task there I'd say maybe Emma Murray might pick her up I imagine and then as well Danielle Lawless they're going to learn very soon she's a dogged uh, player she loves to get forward there's nothing easy off, off Danielle Lawless um, so you know Dublin made two changes but yet yeah, Jen Dunn gone off um, to be able to replace Jennifer Dunn with, with Carla Rowe is you know yeah. it's, it's in, our, in, in Dublin's arsenal so that's you know another threat to Waterford yeah exactly and you mentioned if Emma Murray is the girl that's going to be put on Carla. It's going to curtail Emma's driving forward because she's going to have her hands full to try and curtail Carla. Yeah, well, Emma should should flip it then and look the other way and, and try to put Carla on the back foot. Very hard to do, you know. It's grand having Carla chase you into her own full mm -hmm. back line, but then when you have to turn around and, and chase her back up the pitch, it, it's very hard done. Um, so And then Lara McGee gone off as well. Um, but uh, you know, I think Danielle Lawless coming in is it's not going to disrupt the defensive sh shape too it's just much. It's interesting. I'm watching Waterford here. They've got five of yeah. their half of their forwards on the half forward line. Yeah, they're they're going to retreat straight away. I imagine. Um, referee did tell them to to go back. You have to start in yeah, in the, in the traditional certain positions. Um, but imagine they'll they'll drop straight away like they did in the first half. So Gavin Finnegan about to get the second half on the way. I don't see any changes on the Waterford team. So he is the second half underway. Waterford will be looking for a very good start to try and make some inroads into this game. Well, we've seen it last week where they turned over a hefty deficit against Meath to come out on top with a very strong second half performance in Dublin. We'll know that Waterford will not give up and they'll keep pushing but they're going to have to find something much better and this is better from them. They're moving the ball a little bit quicker and Emma Murray's been pulled back there. But it's quicker hands from Waterford already, something we spoke about, so we've seen a glimpse of what they need to do. Yeah, Ailish O'Dowd followed Emma Murray from the second the ball was thrown in and Waterford got possession there. Um, so Dublin have, have given her the man-marking job. Um, a super block by Leah Caffrey, but yeah, Ailish did, did pull the arm there. So, you know, an easy scoreable free for Kellyanne Hogan. Uh, no mistake. So Waterford will be happy with that. Game possession and, and a successful attack from the off. Yeah, exactly. So all they can do is try and chip into the advantage. But Dublin moving the ball quickly again out of defence. And the quick kick out from Shields. And a little nudge on the back there on Kiva O'Connor. It's been very, very lively. As Kiva. As she plays this ball up along the wing. But there might be too much on that. And there is. It's out over the sideline. Possession given back to Waterford. And it's going to be taken here by Aoife Murray. Just inside her own 45 metre line, but she gives it straight back to Kiva again. Kiva in looking for Neve Hedren again, but it's a waste but pass from Neve. She gives it straight to Emma Murray, who's been pushed across the field. And Waterford put under pressure as they try to work their way out of defence. And it could well be blue for over carrying here, but she just managed to evade the whistle of the referee. And indeed, she's been awarded a free herself. Has Anya O'Neill. She gives it out now to Kellyanne. Kellyanne flicks it forward here. An opportunity now for Karen McGrath. Gives it back again to Kellyanne. Kellyanne looks ahead of herself. Plays a little daisy cutter. But it slips through the hands of 
the Dublin cornerback, but there was another girl there, Neve Crowley was the girl that it slipped through the hands of, but Dublin and Neve Crowley has been fouled. But interesting now what we will the referee give it because we've seen this throughout the league where some frees have been given the opposite way, and indeed this is another one. And I think teams are reading into this one now. Kira. Yeah. Now if you've been doing it for the last couple of years, in fairness, it's something that teams have identified and you do feel hard done by when you you know you just run onto the ball, you have momentum, and just as you get a possession, you're hit with that that open chest tackle, and and there's nothing you can do to avoid the tackle. Uh, it's not even a tackle, but you're 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 doing that. You're you're making that open chest tackle um, to win your free. It's not to actually dispossess the player in possession or stop them, uh, and it's quite dangerous there. Someone someone's going to get seriously hurt, so it does need to be looked at, but. You know, if take the hit when you're free, every player's going to take the hit. They are indeed. With Waterford, blue for over, carrying again. The options weren't there for Waterford. Something we've seen in the first half as well. But Dublin are very well organised defensively. Nia Caffrey with this free out now for the Dubs, who lead by 3 5 to 4 points. And the big game, I suppose, this afternoon is the relegation battle. Donegal and Mayo to see who will be relegated from Division 1 and Mayo very much in control so it looks like Dublin are heading to Division 2 but Lauren McGregor almost turning over the ball there but the referee says it's a push or is it push in the back no he's given it the other way but it looked like the yeah, Shields was pushed yeah I don't think it should have been a free in I thought Brie McMahon ended up yes Abby gathered the ball there and was on the ground but then Brie McMahon fell on her so she couldn't get up I don't know why that's a free in I thought he initially was going to give the hot ball and he's very slow to, to signal yeah. signal what any foul is for put up his hand so I think did he possibly doubt himself on that one but yeah that shouldn't straightforward free for Kellyanne Hogan but it should have been shouldn't have been a free in um, I don't think that was that was quite harsh but Abby Shields got punished f for a mistake there unfortunately and, and Dublin need to be better Waterford are pushing up on Dublin's defence something they, they got a bit of joy from um, towards the latter half of the first half um, so they need to do more of it now but then they have to retreat because uh, Dublin are going to kick like they're doing now and there's space for them to hit yeah. um, so Dublin or Waterford on the back foot here now Ellen Gribben coming driving forward for them over on the far side as the sun shines down here now on Parnell Park and now to Carla Rowe Rowe, little dinky pass inside and here's Neve Hatton coming on to this one but that's a disappointing effort from Neve. she'll be disappointed with that one and Waterford now with a chance to break up the field and this is where Waterford can be very very dangerous we saw them against Donegal earlier in the year and when they turned the ball over they were very quick at moving the ball but as I say that they give it away very cheaply again and the management of Waterford will be bitterly disappointed with some of their distribution out this afternoon but Neve. Hedrington wins possession over on the far side and the referee is going to throw this one up I think he is electing that there was no free for either side so he's going to throw this one up 3-5 five to 5 points those goals separating the teams at the moment as both teams and management prepare for the championship down the line as Neve has beaten to that one and Waterford worked their way out with Dunford and now it's with McGrath over on the far side coming solo and out of defence. Now this cross out over the 65 metre line. And coming on to this one is Kate McGrath. And now coming through the centre is Kellyanne Hogan. Hogan trying to break away from the challenge there. And Hogan does exactly that. But the effort coming in is the wasteful one. And it's another chance gone of begging for Waterford who have hit the first two points of the second half. But the referee says that she was pulled back. So he's going back for the free. And it's a chance for Kellyanne, so maybe that's why she take she took the shot because it was a shot for nothing, Kira. Yeah, you know she she's been popping them over the bar from freeze. She probably had no other option that the shot was probably be the right decision there, but she'd run the length of the pitch. She was off her feet, uh, off balance a little bit as well, and and had no options, so she had to pull the trigger. Um, but she's got her free, and she'll be much more settled for this. So Waterford looking for the perfect start to the second half. And they have done that. Three points all from the boot of Kellyanne Hogan. And all from Freeze. So making inroads. But there's still a long way back. Three, five to six points between the sides. At the moment, eight points. But Waterford 
just chipping away as they make their first change of the afternoon. Eva Waring has been replaced. I'm not sure just what number has come on as of yet. She's in the middle of that bunch down there. It's number 27. And they can tell you that is another of the Murray sisters. Katie is into the fray for Waterford. Now Dublin looking for their first score of the second half. As Martha Bourne who picked up a yellow card in the first half. Lays it back to Leah Caffrey who spreads it over to the far side now to Neve Crowley. Crowley though give possession away. And both teams guilty of giving away cheap possession. Breach McMahon, who was very lively in the first half, ships past one challenge, then the other, and turns away from another. And just as she turned away, the referee's whistle sounded. So it's going back for the free again. Dublin don't seem to have come back out of the dressing room for the second half. Or they've given possession away very, very poorly, and McBohan will be he'll not be a happy man. Yeah, something they need to look at. Um, they probably need to fire a little bit more for half time but here we have Kellyanne Hogan run through the centre again she'd be disappointed with that one but she's a threat and, and Dublin haven't stopped her and Waterford are relying on her but she's coming up with the goods herself and Breed McMaw um, so th they need to get more of that before Dublin wake up and, and get to grips with the second half it's back to Abby Shields he flicks it out Dublin working the way out of defence again but that wasn't the best of balls to Neve Crowley she did well to win it but she was under pressure. She wins a free out. As there was a Waterford player right breathing down her neck when she gained possession. Leah gives it back towards her goalkeeper, Abby Shields again. Abby takes a little hand to toe. And Waterford, or Waterford trying to turn that one over. But Dublin find a little bit of space to come out with it. And breaking in from the, the wing here now is the midfielder, which is Eilish O'Dowd. Lays it out here now to O'Connor. Kiva using her pace to take on the Waterford defence as she tries to work her way in and wins herself a free in here. Did very well, did Kiva O'Connor to win that free and she's got pace to Bourne and she was using it there and she. That's one I would say the, pl the player won the free. Yeah, like the classic wing forward kind of play, beat the player, cut across their path. You either get tripped and win your free or, or you're ahead and you gain a couple of yards on them uh, there. But, th you know, that pace is very hard to, to deal with. Um, and it's probably something that Waterford don't have in those wing forward positions. Or if they do, they're, they're not utilising um, it to their advantage. So, yeah, it's, it's just, just she's a weapon for, for, um, for Dublin and, and Waterford just need to make sure she doesn't get supply of the ball or room to, to build up her speed and attack the space. Kate makes it a nine point game again with Dublin's first score of the second half in the tenth minute as Emma Murray wins a free for Waterford and plays it over to the far side so they come forward again with Anya O'Neill and finds a little bit of space and here's a chance now for them to move forward even more Karen McGrath McGrath put under pressure though flicks it out the back door and picked up there by Anya O'Neill again O'Neill quick hands now from Waterford but the player coming through is the substitute which is Murray Katie Murray back out again and back out to O'Neill O'Neill shrugs away from one challenge then the other and plays it across the front of the goal though and out and wide another wide for Waterford another missed opportunity for the Dacia girls so it remains a nine point game and Dublin very much keeping Waterford at arm's length and in control here without really lighting up the second half as of yet. 11 minutes gone. It's been Waterford that have been calling the shots, but probably expected that, Kira, when they were so far behind they needed to improve. Yeah, and, and I think defensively they have improved. They're tackling much further up into, into Dublin's half of the pitch, which is good that takes a lot of hard work but I think in possession of the ball Waterford need to be a little more economical you know it's it's when they get inside the 45 it's one player trying to do all the work rather than than a, you know a team process uh, and working a score through the hands and waiting for the score it's, it's like it's a bit rushed um, so then maybe they need to hold possession a little bit more suck the Dublin defence out create a bit of space so that, that they, they do have time to to take the right shot uh, but at the moment it's kind of like we need to score quick rather than making sure they keep possession of the ball and ensuring that the ball does go over the bar Dublin take the short kick out there out towards Jessica Tobin they've also made a change Jodie Egan has been replaced on the Dublin side 
And they're coming forward now with Crowley. Crowley gathers possession. Second attempt lays it off to the far side to Ellen Gribben. Gribben turns away from one challenge but turns into another one. But she has got support from Crowley who lost her footing. But the referee's whistle had already, or the hand was already up for a foul. So it's going to be a free to Dublin. I'm not sure who came on there, Kira, for Dublin. But I know Jesse, or Jody Egan has been replaced. We'll just wait to see who has came in to the Dublin side. And it's number 18, which is Sheena McGuckin. McGuckin? Oh, not Sheena McGuckin. I'm looking at the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> Annabelle Timothy is the girl that is in to the Dublin side. And Waterford are also making a change, I think. Number 17 is going off, which is Catherine Hines. So she has been replaced and the girl that didn't start, Cara McCarthy, is in wearing number 12 for Waterford. So both managements using their bench and, and giving players a run out. And I suppose there is those jerseys in championship football up for grabs, Kira. Yeah, and I suppose at the end of the league as well, you need to manage player load um, in terms of giving players rest. So you'd like Dublin taking off Jen Dunn and Lauren McGee, but also giving girls game time and... Um, that's a little wide there for Ellen Gribben. Um, so I, I, I imagine both sides will start emptying the bench now. This, of course, a little bearing on positioning or a league final place or relegation. It's just a matter of playing out the league for these two teams and trying to get a little bit of confidence and learn a little bit more ahead of that championship, of course. And the referee saying that there was a a little shoulder on the back of a Waterford player, so it's going to be a free to the Dacia girls. It's going to be taken by Kate McGrath. She plays it into the centre there to Dunford, the full back, Megan Dunford coming forward. Now it's in the hands of Karen McGrath. McGrath looks for support. She gets it here from Kate McGrath. Kate, has time to come forward here for Waterford before she plays it into Breach McMaugh. McMaugh lays it off and Waterford try to create something here with Murray. Murray lays it back to Dunford again. Coming out the back to Ony O'Neill. O'Neill needs to get support. No, she doesn't because she found a little pocket of space there. But she turned into another Dublin girl. Plays it out to the far side to Megan Dunford again. Plays it into the corner. And trying to work away in is Annie Fitzgerald. But Dublin getting the bodies back there. But Emma Murray is up in support. And Emma Murray uses her pace in coming through. She could have given it there. But she didn't, and there might have been a goal opportunity had she given it to her sister, Katie, who was coming at a steam train past her. And I suppose that's the difference where Dublin have. But Breeze McMaw has turned Carla Rowe over here, and they have possession back again. She's got Lauren McGregor beside her if she needs her. But Breeze with the shot, and it's a wasteful one again. There was a goal chance there for Waterford, Kira. Emma Murray made the bust of pace, and Katie... Murray went off her shoulder but she didn't give it she didn't give it no and you know and there might be a few words after the match between the sisters there yeah. uh, but fantastic run by, by Emma in fairness to, to come in off the end lines cut through the Dublin defence and Casey uh, timed her run really really well it should have been a slip pass and pulled the trigger on the goal at the same time um, Emma would be disappointed that she did, the ball didn't go dead um, or over the bar there so it's nearly like a, a, a double chance kind of gone in that attack as well but Breed McMahon did very well to read the play intercept Carla Rose hand pass there um, so Waterford did get something at the end but it should have been three points number of changes there two for Waterford one for Dublin going off the Dublin team is Aoife Cain and went off the Waterford team was Cora Murray and Annie Fitzgerald so we will tell you who has come on in a moment on both sides but the ball forward here is Dublin try to get another score for the start of the second half or midway through the second half on this occasion and here they come there might be a goal chance here for Carla Rowe Rowe quick offload and that's the difference between the two sides the player coming in and Dublin with the quick hands have created the chance and Kate Sullivan made sure of it and what we were talking about at the other side Dublin executed it perfectly at the other end yeah the ball to Carla Rowe just coming short so she had to check her run and Kate Sullivan's always off the shoulder in those situations um, where there's a goal she's never too far away they're after turning over a Waterford's kick out here taking a quick so Waterford under a lot of pressure they are and here comes Roe again Roe inside 
And there might be a chance here for another goal. Annabelle with the effort, but she's placed this one up in the air, but it's not gone yet as Kiva O'Connor flicks it back here. And Dublin still hold possession. Back out to Carla Rowe again. Snapshot from Rowe, but this one just to the wrong side. And White, it's a 4-6 to 6 points. Four goals for the Dubs. Has them very much in control. And they'll be looking now for a clean sheet at the other side. Yeah, yeah, minimum they'll be they'll be looking for 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 no scores now. Like to concede six points, you generally win a game when you do so. Um, so you know, keeping it to to single figures will be very important for Dublin. It's one of their their targets for the remainder of the game. Emma Morley's pass doesn't go to hand. Kellyanne couldn't take it. And Dublin turned that one over again, and here they come yet again. Carter O find more space and more possession of the ball now she comes forward she's got help with Neve Hedgerton and she gathers possession does Neve holds off the challenge taking on the water for defence she tries to go through but she's hauled to the ground and she was thinking of getting through there maybe for a goal but she's pulled to the ground and the referee will be having a little word here with the Waterford gear and I'd be surprised if he doesn't issue a card but no he's elected not to on this occasion so it's going to be just a free in to Dublin and a chance for Kate who has won three to her name already with the opportunity to extend the Dublin lead out further as they look at me watch 18 minutes gone in the second half and Kate with the effort and with the point 4-7 to 6 points I suppose you look at both halves Dublin were slow at start in the the first half, although they did hit the first two one, but it took them a wee while to get going. The same in the second half. Yeah, they're they're gathering a little bit of momentum, um, as well. I think the difference there is that Carla Rose getting on possession further up the field, whereas at the start of the the, ha the first half, Emma Murray kind of had her on the back foot, had her defending, um, so she's she's working as a, a nice link there. Um, but you know, there's opportunity here now. Um, Neve Hedderton's gone off, so Megan Dunford might find herself in a little bit. Um, more space, let, less of a physical battle maybe up front uh, but Dublin need to be careful, they've, they've run a lot of changes in, in every match they've played um, and kind of the, the, the quality of play has, has dropped just a little bit so there's, there's pressure on everyone coming off the bench here now to, to continue the momentum that, they, momentum that they've had the last five minutes Here's Kit Sullivan, confidence high in Sullivan but this one's just going to tail out to the wrong side and wide but when she had the ball straight away had the go and you can just see her confidence was up she fancied her chances yeah um, dead right it's, it's not like Kate to miss, a, to miss a shot like that like she's probably the most skillful player on that Dublin panel um, so that's rare but you know when you're, when you're kicking them over you, you have to keep taking your shots so the short kick out puts Aoife Murray under severe pressure straight away but she has won her team a free out Stole a few yards as well, but no, says the referee. She, Scavin is putting her back. And Aoife is going to play it back here to her goalkeeper. So they'll have to work it out again. So 4-7 to 6 points. Dublin in control as we enter the final 10 minutes of this Little Ladies National Football League. Encounter coming to you live from Parnell Park. On this Sunday afternoon the final round of league fixtures both of these teams next encounter will be championship football the heat of the summer at the end of April will be into the championship campaign and the referee signals that that's going to be a free in Dublin are making another change as well they did take on Chloe Darby a little while ago now they've introduced another player it looks like number 24 over there which is Rachel Brennan looks like the player that has come in for Dublin as you said Mick very much using this bench and giving players a run out here. And Waterford with a free. And they'll be looking to try and find something in the last 10 minutes to just give them a little bit of positives to finish off the league campaign. Although it has been a good league campaign. They're not one to suffer a heavy defeat to finish it off. Because they've been very close. The biggest defeat they've had so far was at the hands of Galway. And that was a five point defeat. They lost by a point to carry the opening day they drew with Cork on day two and they come forward with Emma Murray and that is going to be a free in for Waterford and a chance for Kellyanne Hogan who had 25 points to her name coming in to this final round of games 
And this is an opportunity for her fifth point of the day. Two in the first half, or she's already had five. Two in the first half, three in the second, so this would be her sixth. If she can manage to get between the posts. And she curls it in, and it looks like it just might come inside the far post, but it doesn't, it comes back off it. And quickest to react there is Jessica Tobin. And Tobin comes out of defence for Dublin. There's it back to Leah Caffrey. And now in the hands of Martha Bourne. Quick offload now to O'Dowd. Sidesteps one challenge and quick hands again. And Dublin moving it very quickly yet again. And Waterford straight away into the, on the back foot. As it looked like a foul there on Tobin. And the referee says yes it was. So it's going to be a free to Dublin. But again, Dublin. And they find that running game. As Kiva O'Connor comes up along down here in front of us. Alongside us as Kiva cuts inside the Waterford challenges, plays it into Carla Rowe. Carla with the outside of the bow. I don't think she was looking, maybe she might have been looking inside for the other player, which is the centre half forward in there, I think it is, which is Orla Nolan. And Nolan tries to get away from one challenge, she does so. And Nolan still going, soccer skills from Nolan, and it's a hat trick for Nolan. Two in the first half, and a goal in the second half, and it's goal number five for Dublin. And we talked about the penalty was cool. That there was cool as well, Kira. Yeah, fantastic. Like that, do, that doesn't surprise me one bit. Or she looks like a girl that has played a bit of soccer. Yeah, she has. Yeah, she played a bit of everything and been successful with everything she she touches. Um, but now to be able to solo the ball while while holding off the opposition player, weave through, and you know, I think a lot of ladies footballers would tend to to pick the ball up off the ground in that situation, which isn't the right decision to do. But then you've Orla Nolan. Like a cucumber, just cool as anything, sliding back of the net. But she's so, so skillful, but so intelligent. Um, and, you know, that she does that the week in, week out in training. Waterford concede a fifth goal. And not the ideal end to what has been a good league campaign for them. Lauren McGregor hasn't got really many opportunities this afternoon. She had 6-5 in the, in the league. And as Kira had mentioned, she would have been one of the players that Dublin would have marked out before the game and Dublin have done their job on her as they try to come forward here Waterford but again it's a disappointing effort when we speak about Lauren McGregor and Dublin have done her homework on her Yeah like I, I, I've been thinking the last couple of minutes who, who's standout players um, for the game so far and you have to say Jess Tobin yeah she hasn't been involved in, in much of the play like defensively she's been solid in terms of Dublin's transition but Lauren McGregor has not got a sniff of the ball and, and Jess Tobin has been like glue to her you know so if you're having a quiet game so is your opposition player and for that opposition player to be the, their top scorer and to be that quiet um, that, that's no mean feat so Jess Tobin has, has a, had a fantastic uh, game on her Just interesting here Kira. I'm looking at Dublin here for the kickouts. the old bunch into the middle yeah, Waterford are going man to man. Um, you know, I think that's nearly the first kick out routine you learn at a club level, even. So, um, th that's this is just standard, really, in terms of ladies' football. But Waterford, at the start of the game, they kind of went on this zonal press and they've switched to a man to man kind of situation. Um, whereas down through the years against them, I've come up against the zonal press. So, it's interesting change of tactics for them. Orla Kennedy is in for Waterford. She replaces Kate McGrath. As Waterford make changes, and here is one of the Dublin substitutes, which is Rachel Brennan. Spreads it away over to the far side, looking for the run there of Ellen Gribben. Gribben up along the wing. There's a good one too. It was picked up by the star of the day, Orla Nolan. Three goals to her name. And she plays it in, looking for Annabelle back out to Nolan again. Quick hands from Nolan now to Carla Rowe. Quick turn from Rowe, and Rowe off the point. Two. Add on another score for Dublin. Carla Rowe getting her name on the score sheet. The team captain for Dublin this year, of course. So 5-8 to 6 points. And it's been a pretty good day for the Dubs this afternoon, Kira. Yeah, Dublin will be happy with that, that attack. Three kick passes and you're down inside the opposition 21. And then, you know, you want your, your big players to be on the ends of those kind of plays. And, and Carla there to, to slot it over the bar. I just see Kiva O'Connor going off. I've been very impressed with her. Yeah, Kiva, when you, when you, you know, with her, with her pace and her skill, um, she's very, very hard to stop. Any player like that is very hard to stop. We have Orla Martin in now, quite similar as well. Um, so good to see her getting a bit more game time. So Dunford with the free in towards Emma Murray. The track there by Carla Rowe. 
Carla pleading her innocence that she didn't foul her, but the referee says she did. And now it's with Katie Murray. Waterford trying to create something here. Kellyanne Hogan turns on to the right foot, but again, this one looks like it's tailing out and wide. I think that five wides in the first half, and that's my fifth wide of the second half, but I may have missed some, so... Waterford will be very disappointed probably with their finishing, Kira. although a lot of them seems to be just snapshots. Yeah, I think Kellyanne Hogan only had kind of a, a shot in her mind there when she got the ball. Um, but, you know, maybe Waterford, to their credit, they were on the road last weekend up this direction against Meath and, you know, to have to do a similar thing this weekend and, and you know, it's, it does drain you, you know, subconsciously. It does take the energy from you. Um, so maybe maybe they're just just tired it's been a long league campaign for them you know sometimes when you're getting performances you have a bit of spring in your step but eventually it does take your their toll so I just think Waterford are just a little bit tired out there today and um, this is not the Waterford that we've seen through the league despite that they're still working in- incredibly incredibly hard they're just not getting the finish at, at the end of it and then I'm wondering too when you're on the road and you're coming for a dead rubber a game that probably means nothing I know it's the management wouldn't want to be looking at it like that there but it's hard when it probably filters into the players' minds. Yeah, I suppose. When it is it, the last round of the league as well. Yeah, when there's nothing to play for, it can be you can be tired after a long league campaign, and then you've you've college football thrown in there as well, and and the long evenings and stuff like that. You, you know, both teams will be happy the league's over mm-hmm. uh, at this stage, but at the same time, you always want to win. Yeah. Uh, you always want to perform well. Um, but I think Dublin had have a lot to prove. You know, the last three games. Um, getting wins, finished the league on the high after, you know, a, a, you know, a, a disappointing start um, to the league campaign. So this this is good for Dublin, but at the same time they can't take the performance um, for granted really because this is a below par Waterford side. It'll be a different come championship. Of course, Dublin's next outing against Meath in the Leinster Championship as they begin their defence of the Leinster Crown. At the home of the All-Ireland Champions, a trip down to Meath to play them before a home game against Leash the following week in the Round Robin series, of course. The top two teams then will advance to the Leinster final, and that's where Dublin will be hoping to go before the All-Ireland series. As Dublin come forward, finishing, trying to finish this game stronger. We're inside the last 30 seconds of normal time, and Waterford looking maybe to try and get something on the scoreboard respectability if they could find the back of the net but Dublin will be in no mood to concede any goals they did talk about they had conceded nine already in the league but they've hit five of their own this afternoon and they've been very solid they haven't looked like conceding any goals at the other end but here there might be an opportunity in here but again the ball just slips away but the referee going back for an earlier infringement so it's going to be a free in to Warford and they'll have to go for a goal here just for respectability unless Kellyanne decides there's not much point going for a goal we'll just take our point as the referee just takes a note of a number of the Dublin girl that conceded the free so Kellyanne as I said six points or five points to her name already looking for number six and she comes forward she's going for the point and she takes her point and Kellyanne Makes it point number six for her and our 31st of the league campaign that moves Waterford on to seven points. And it's not ideal end to the league for Waterford, as we mentioned. Okay, it is only the end of the league and it didn't mean much today, but it's not something they wanted a heavy defeat for the last round of the league and now with no championship for probably five weeks. No, but uh, that's the same thing. You can you can easily park today. Um, they will get a bit of a break, I imagine, over the next week, week and a half. And then, you know, their focus will be on championship. It won't be on the league. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of working on areas you need to improve on. But then, you know, strengthening the areas that have, have made you successful during the league. And there's so many positives for water to take, Waterford to take. Uh, I think the Munster Championship is going to be one of the most competitive. You have Cork coming back into their own. Kerry, obviously, being, you know, one of the most, well, in my opinion, best team in the country at the moment to play lovely lovely football um, so that's competitive football down there for Waterford um, so it, the Munster Championship will be very difficult for them um, 
But like I said, you, you've parked the league. Um, you don't even, you know, they won't talk of it after today. Nope. They'll look back and they'll take the positives from it. And they'll learn from this as well. As he said, up against Cork, Kerry and Tipperary in the Munster Championship. And then, of course, they will advance then, of course, the All-Ireland Series after that. But here come, they'll keep coming and they might have a goal chance here. Katie Murray going through, Katie going for the goal. But it's just to the outside and wide of the target but they did create that goal chance and the referee may say enough is enough for this one the league final of course division one coming up on the 15th of april between galway and Kerry as gavin finnegan calls a halt to this one and the league campaign for dublin and waterford is over dublin finishing it with three successive victories it's a defeat for waterford but they've had a good league campaign and they'll be back in Division 1 for next year. Their attention will turn to the Munster Championship. For bo but for Mick Bohan's side, it's the Championship in five weeks. But it's a good end to the league, as you mentioned, Kira. Three successive victories. Yeah, lots of positives. I can only imagine Mick's focus now will be on Waterford's last two attacks there. Um, two goal chances is, is not a great way to kind of end the match from Dublin's point of view. But they're creating goal chances throughout the game. Uh, and taking them as well um, or Nolan in particular so yeah lo lots of positives to take from that against a very informed team um, so yeah there, it's plenty of momentum there to, to carry into the next round into Leinster but you know plenty to work on um, as, as the girls will be very aware of Just looking on Dublin of course Kira Mick he's had plenty of options plenty of chances to look at players so he'll have an idea of now of what his championship team is going to be and he looks to have options off the bench too yeah and look everybody within the panel be very aware of of what they need to to keep doing what they're doing well but also areas they need to chase and work if they want to get into the team or stay and uh, stay in the starting 15 so there, there's a chance for everyone to knuckle down and, and concentrate on on that and build towards um leinster championship um but yeah, look, th there's a massive management group there. Everyone with a specific role, um, a fantastic setup. Uh, in fairness, so Dublin have everything there to to get the most out of themselves. They just need to ensure that 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 happens. And you, you well, you're obviously hoping they're going to be in the shake-up come the final stages of it. And when you look at the championship this year, Meath haven't lit up the league. You have you're talking about Cork are still there. Kerry are obviously the side that has really lit it up. Galway are there it it just looks like a championship this year that is wide open yeah you kind of think at this stage of the year you kind of always think okay there's a there's a couple of teams in the mix usually there may be about four names there but but this year it's it's a spectrum of things and a spectrum of teams I think the for the first time maybe not so much in Leinster but it's going to be like Ulster, Munster, Connacht are going to be very competitive championships, um, which is good. That's really, really good for the game. You know, you talk about recent narratives being of are the provincial champions championships worthwhile? Is, is there any point in having them there? Well, I think this summer is going to be lit up with with fantastic games in in the championship, and you're looking to to have the nicest path towards the All Ireland final yeah. if that's your aim. And so, getting ahead of steam and and performing and getting Silverware in your in your provincial championship is really important for that. Um, heading into the into the All Ireland series. And as um, you mentioned before, building momentum. Yeah, look, you know, it, winning's a habit, uh, and the more you win, the more you will win. Um, so so that that's really important. Um, but also the break is important important yeah. too. So the next five weeks will be nice for the players, but very very important. Right, Kira, thank you very much for joining me on commentary. So that's the next. It, for outing for the both of these sides, it's championship time. Their league campaign is over. Dublin have finished with three successive victories and they've won here this afternoon against Waterford quite comfortably in the end. Dublin, five goals and eight points. Waterford, seven points. So from Kira and myself and Barry back at base and Darren on camera, all at Mac AV and the ladies LGFA. It's goodbye from Parnell Park.
and together we prayed like there was no tomorrow. And they told us that was fine. You can play. You're good enough. And thought that was good enough for us. It wasn't. We are relentless. The game isn't over until we say it's over. Until we get everything we've given everything for. Until we level the playing field. Bleeding. Proud supporters. Global Gaming Footprint.